On this week's episode of A Drier Dose of Disney, Jared compares the food and drinks between the Disney and Universal parks to decide which park does food better. Hey, welcome to another episode of A Drier Dose of Disney. I'm your host, Jared Dreyer. And today we are going to be talking more about food. You've probably heard our series of 11 different episodes of the best foods in the parks. And we did a park by park analysis where we talked about the best restaurants, the best meals, and the best snacks and treats at every single park. But today we're going to pick back up with that series. And we're actually going to talk about who does food better, Disney or Universal. And then next in our series, we are going to be doing an episode on allergies. So how to navigate the parks with food allergies, because we have friends that do have a severe peanut allergy, and we want to hear from them on how they approach that, because there's a lot of people with different allergies out there, whether it's peanuts or gluten or many other types of fruits or stuff. So we want to make sure that we are covering all that kind of important information for you guys. Being said that we are going to be giving some great episodes here coming up, I do want to remind you. Wherever you're listening to us, you want to click subscribe. So go ahead and pause the podcast if you're on an audio format or if you're on the video format on YouTube and go ahead and click that subscribe button. That way, when we drop those episodes into your inbox, you're going to see those come and hit. And then you're going to have that content right there at your fingertips each and every week because we do publish episodes every single Tuesday. So it's a great thing to be a subscriber. To subscribe through YouTube or your podcast platform is totally free. We do not charge for subscriptions at all. So we definitely want to get a lot of subscribers out there. Now, in contrast to that, if there is a tip or trick that has saved you some money or you thought, hey, this has been a really good tip for us and this is going to make our experience a lot better, we encourage you to support us over at Patreon. Uh, There is a link in our podcast description or on the YouTube description for our Patreon account. And a couple bucks goes a long way to keeping this podcast going. And you can subscribe through there as well. And those subscriptions do cost money in support for our podcast, but we love our subscribers. And because we love our subscribers, we do offer early access to some really proprietary episodes like our uh, Butterbeer episode or how to go to Disney for almost free, which will be moving over to the general channel here in the next few months. And we will be replacing that with some new proprietary podcasts. So really cool things happening over at Patreon. So We love our supporters, so please click over there and support us over there. And we also have some cool things uh, that our supporters will also get being able to contribute to the podcast or being on the podcast where we will talk about their favorite Disney memories or universal memories and their tips or tricks as well. So a lot of cool things coming there with the podcast. So today we're going to talk about food at the different parks, and we're not going to do a park by park analysis like we did in the other 11 episodes. All we want to solve today is one question and one question only, and that is who does food and drink better, Disney or Universal, and why? What we're going to do is we're going to talk through four different aspects of this. So we're going to start with food quality. Uh, So how good is the actual food that you're going to be consuming at the parks? Number two, the drink quality. Who has better drinks and what kind of drinks are out there? Number three is food variety. And the reason food variety is important is because a lot of people want something a little more diverse, or maybe you want to try something new or different that you don't have near home. So we'll be talking about variety. And then we're going to finally wrap it up with atmosphere. And I know that atmosphere doesn't necessarily have a one-to-one impact on the food quality or anything like that, but it does make a substantial difference. And we're going to talk about the differences that you will see between the different parks, but it does make a difference. And we're going to talk about the difference you will see between Universal and Disney on the atmosphere and how it's starting to change a little bit. We are seeing a huge shift in the atmosphere at the parks, and we want to go over all that. So with that, let's go ahead and dive right on in. And we are going to start today with our food quality. So if you heard our other episodes, we talked about the best meals and the best restaurants at every single park across the board. And I have to say, I am probably in that 1% of people that I have eaten more theme park food than 99% of the other people out there in the world. And that's just because we go to the theme parks a lot. So obviously we eat there quite a bit, but we've made it our goal to get around and try every single restaurant and try as many different menu items as possible. And I can tell you a lot of even your regular park goers don't do that. 
So I'm confident to say I am in the top 1% of people that have eaten uh, food at the theme parks. And I can tell you that as far as food quality goes, they aren't too far off. But I want to make one specific call out when I'm talking about the differences between Disney and Universal. So that is your general food, your normal things that you're thinking about for snacks, for lunch, for dinner are going to be very similar in food quality when you're going through quick service or you're going up to the carts. Even at Universal, when you're going into the uh, different restaurants they have there, it's pretty on par with their quick service across the board. Disney has a distinct difference, and that's at their high-end restaurants. Universal has Mythos, which is ranked, and we talked about it on the Universal episode. It is ranked worldwide as one of the top theme park restaurants anywhere in the world. And we've eaten at Mythos, and the food is good. There's no question about that. Mythos is a great restaurant. But Mythos is not fine dining. And let me be specific with what I mean on that. When you go to Disney parks, you have restaurants like Le Cellier over in the Canada area of Epcot, or you have Tiffin's over at Animal Kingdom, which actually we had a really great experience there over Christmas. Tiffin's is that white tablecloth chef-inspired menu that these food servings are relatively small but the food is incredible, okay? And it doesn't mean you won't get full when you have small quantity over there. You're just gonna end up going through multiple courses to get full, unlike a normal meal where you know, you're gonna get it all at once. So there is a distinct difference between Disney and Universal when it comes to fine dining. And because of that, we will give Disney the edge on food quality because they have that extra tier, though you do have to pay for it and you may have to have a reservation to get it, They do have that higher tier food quality that Universal does not. Now, like I said, Mythos is a great restaurant. Mythos is very much on par with a really nice Italian restaurant, like a macaroni grill. If you have that in your area, it's a little bit nicer than Olive Garden if you're comparing it to Italian, but it's good, but it is not white tablecloth chef inspired type meals over there. So that is the big difference there on the food quality. Now. We'll talk a little bit about food variety here in a few minutes, but when you're going across all the different strata of the different foods that are at the different parks, for the most part, the snacks are very consistent. The snack quality is very good. For example, we love crepes and there are crepes at Epcot as well as there used to be at Disney Springs, but there are really good crepes over at Universal Studios Orlando and they're almost identical. They have very similar tastes, very similar flavors. I can't say either one is better than the other. I can say that each park has their own unique things like lard lad donuts over at Universal Studios versus the cream cheese pretzels over at Disney. Both are good. We really love the cream cheese pretzel. I might give that a little bit of an edge, but the donut, it's just a really big donut and that one's fun to eat as well. They both have turkey legs at both parks, so you can get turkey legs at either one. They have a really cool area over in Springfield over at Universal Studios where you have a lot of variety. And again, we'll come back to variety in just a moment. And likewise, Disney has broken up their parks and they have all the different lands and all the different foods uh, out there as well. For quick service, it's on par. It's very similar. Whether you're getting a rotisserie chicken through the three broomsticks in the Harry Potter land or you're over at the dinosaur area at Jurassic Park, they have uh, the rotisserie chicken there as well or you're getting that over at the Disney parks. They are very similar. So not a huge uh, amount of difference there on all those other tiers. The food quality is, again, very similar. Uh, We do give Disney the edge for just having that extra expensive tier up there where the food is just absolutely amazing. Let's go number two to drink quality. And ironically, though, I will say hands down the best drink that I've ever had at any theme park is butterbeer and Universal wins hands down for having the best drink. When I'm comparing the parks as a whole and the drinks that are offered, I again will give the edge to Disney. And this goes back to the variety, which we're going to talk about here in a couple minutes. And at Disney parks, you have multiple frozen beverages or multiple different alcoholic beverages or different treats in the different lands that you will go to. And though Butterbeer is the apex, they are the top best drink that is out there. That's all that Universal really has. When you go through their other restaurants, uh, they have your typical Coke products. They have some ices here and there. But outside of the Butterbeer, they don't really have anything super unique. They do have 
uh, pumpkin juice over in the Harry Potter land. And that's okay. but didn't knock my socks off. And they do have a bar in the back of the three broomsticks where you can get some really cool adult beverages. And that's awesome. They have lily water, which actually is just bottled water, but they don't have any other themed drinks throughout the parks. Now, I do know over in the Minions area, they do have some banana flavored things and banana is not really our, our favorite flavor. So we don't really indulge in that a whole lot, but there's really, they don't have a unique drink in every area of the park, like the way Disney will. Now, when you go to Disney and Magic Kingdom is my favorite example of this, but don't get me wrong, Epcot can compare probably outcompete Magic Kingdom. At Magic Kingdom, you're going to have the Bear Tracks Root Beer Float, which is one of my favorite drinks. That is a frozen root beer float that has peanut butter chips on top. That one's really good. Over at the Cheshire Cafe, they've got a really great frozen drink. Over at Animal Kingdom in the Pandora Land, they have the Night Blossom, which is more of a pear, and it's a tart frozen drink with bulba in it. We've talked a lot about different drinks on our different episodes. During Epcot's Food and Wine, of course, you have millions of drinks, including my favorite, the Apple Blossom Sky, which is really good and right up there with Butterbeer. But back at Magic Kingdom, you have LeFou's Brew. So you pick up what I'm saying here is that there are so many different drinks and different experiences throughout the Disney parks that Universal is just not keeping up with. Now, they have, like I said, the very best drink in Butterbeer but they don't have the variety or the quantity of different things that you can try. Because of that, we do give the drink quality to Disney on this. So Disney's won the first two. Let's go to food variety. And food variety, of course, we're talking about, do they have things like American food, barbecue, Mexican, Italian? What kind of different flavors are out there? And without a question, Disney wins this. Epcot alone wins this. Epcot, as you go through the World Showcase, you can try different foods from different parts of the world. That is really cool. That's one of our favorite things to do. And especially if you go during a festival, they have four festivals during the year. They have the Art Festival, which is going on in the early part of the year. Then they go to the Flower and Garden Festival, which is the second part of the year. Food and Wine takes up the majority of the mid-year through the end of the year. And then they have the Holiday Festival right at the end of the year. So anytime you go during a festival, they're going to have booths up all over the entire park that you can try different foods from different places, and they're all great. So the food variety at uh, Disney, hands down, just wins. Now, if you were to take Epcot out of the mix, okay, and you wanted to go straight with just your normal Magic Kingdom, your Animal Kingdom, your Hollywood Studios versus the Universal Parks, they're actually pretty close in variety. Now, at Magic Kingdom, you get a little bit more just because of all the different lands and they try to theme things. So like over by the Pirates of the Caribbean, uh, they've got a cool restaurant over there. Over well, Obviously, we talked about Pecos Bill and the Magic Kingdom episode. That's a one that I love that has a Tex-Mex flavor to it. You get all that through the Frontierland area. They also have the Aloha Isle where you get the Dole Whip. So you pick up what I'm saying. They just do a little bit more. We're over at Universal. They've got, again, go back to food quality. They have got really good food, and I love the food over at Universal. But aside from the Harry Potter land, obviously that's more poised towards Harry Potter. And then you've got Springfield that has the comic book stuff. They have a few different places, but not the same kind of variety that Disney does. Now, I will call out that at Universal Studios Orlando, so not Islands of Adventure, there is a really cool area over close to uh, the Fast and the Furious between that and, and the, the Escape from New York with Jimmy Fallon ride, that they have a Irish pub that's really good. They've got a seafood restaurant over there where Jaws used to be, and that's where you see the sharks still hanging up today. They've got some more variety over on that side of the park, which is really cool, and I encourage you to go check it out. But again, Disney just gets the edge here just because they have a little bit more variety, and then Epcot just landslides it when you compare it to Epcot. So know that they're not lacking. They just don't have as much as what Disney does. Which brings me to my final one. And this honestly, though it's not a one-to-one -one comparison because of, like I said, uh, the food quality is really good at both the parks. I, we love everything that we eat there. Uh, the atmosphere is very different. What I want to do is I want to take you back in time and we're going to start talking with Universal and what Universal used to be like and where Universal is going. 
And then we're going to talk about the difference in what Disney does differently and why the atmosphere makes a big difference. With that, I do want to start by going back in time. And I want to call out, if you're watching on the YouTube version, you can see that I'm wearing this really cool new shirt. And it's in honor of my favorite restaurant over at Universal that is now unfortunately closed. And it's the Classic Monsters Cafe. And this restaurant had some of the best atmosphere in all of Universal. So if you ever had the privilege of eating at the Monsters Cafe over there at Universal, which used to be over uh, next to the Mummy Ride, just a little bit away from the Rip Rocket roller coaster, which is a really fun ride, this cafe had all the classic monsters in it. So we're talking old school classics. So old Frankenstein, old Wolfman, old Dracula. We had the Bride of Frankenstein, the Invisible Man, the Creature from the Black Lagoon, which is a universal phenomenon classic movie. It's really great if you consider when it was made and how scary that was for a lot of people back in the day. My shirt has all of those characters on there and the restaurant was just super cool. You'd walk in there. It was a little bit like the Haunted Mansion you had the cobwebs up there. It was a little bit dark. They had the flickering candles in some different areas of the restaurant. Of course, where you walk in and you're going to do your quick service, they had to have that a little more lit up so that you could see the menus and you could get all the food taken care of. And then once you made your way through the restaurant, it had a ton of seating, but they would play the old classic monster movies and they had displays with the classic monsters in them or costumes from the different movies and whatnot. So it was a really cool environment if you like classic monsters, which I absolutely love them. And so it was a great atmosphere type restaurant. However, when you go back in time into Universal, they had that. They also had the seafood restaurant, like I said, over by where the Jaws ride is. When you go over to Islands of Adventure, since that's a newer park, they always had the Fantastic Four pizza. They always had the green eggs and ham in Seuss Land. They always had those different elements of throughout the park, including the Jurassic Park over there. But that was really about it. They had uh, your quick service type hamburgers, hot dogs, and other things throughout the park. But the theming, even today, when you look at the theming at Islands of Adventure, the Fantastic Four pizza, yeah, it's cool. Fantastic Four are on the outside of your building. And when you come in, it's just quick service pizza. There's nothing special in there going on. The pizza's decent. We actually liked our meal there. So it's not bad food. Again, back to food quality. They have good quality, but it's not an exciting place to go. It's not anywhere that I want to go be immersed. When you go over to the Jurassic Park area and you go into their cafe there, they have barbecue, which you guys know that I love. Uh, they have the rotisserie chicken. The food is really good, but they just have tables set up and you get your drinks and you just go sit and eat. When you go over into Seuss Land, You've got the green eggs and ham stand. It's an actual, it's a counter. So you're not in a restaurant over there and then you're sitting outside and it's whimsical over there, but you're just sitting at normal tables. You go into Mythos. Mythos, like I said, top restaurant. Now that one is themed a little bit more where you're kind of in this rock cave type of formation in there. And they've got the ancient Greek gods and statues up around there going for that lost continent type of feel. The food is what makes Mythos so good. The food is really good over there. Uh, the restaurant itself is cool, but it's not knock your socks off. So that's back in time. Okay, so that's back, let's say 15 plus years ago. That's what Universal used to be like. So when they repurposed the Back to the Future ride in the late 90s, early 2000s and made it into the Simpsons land, it was about the same time that they built Islands of Adventure. And at that point in time, uh, Universal at Universal Studios decided to make a land fully dedicated to the Simpsons. Now, if you look over at Islands of Adventure, you can see how they did the same thing through the uh, different islands. You have the Marvel Island, Cartoon Island, Jurassic Island, the Dr. Seuss Island, and the Lost Continent. Now, this is all before Harry Potter. Over at Universal Studios Orlando, they had the themed rides like Jaws, the ride, but they didn't have lands like they did over at Islands of Adventure. So with The Simpsons, it was their first attempt to really theme a land together and tie it all together with all the food. So, of course, over at Simpsons, you have Moe's, which is the bar that Homer Simpson frequents. And then you have the fast food area that has the Cletus's Chicken Shack. You've got the Bumbleman Taco Truck, which is out front. You've got Krusty Burger. You've got a lot of really cool different places in there. That was their first attempt at really theming their food. 
And they did a good job. Actually, if you go into the Simpsons fast food area, they did really well in there. It does feel like you're in the Simpsons world. Now, granted, you're in a cartoon and the cartoon has a lot of yellows and oranges in it. And so it can feel a little, I don't want to say offensive on the eyes, but it does feel a little like you want to get out of there and you don't want to spend a lot of time. So it's not like you want to hang out in there a whole lot, but they did a really good job of theming and creating an atmosphere where you feel like you're living in the Simpsons world. And then of course, as you fast forward in time, they then came back and they created the Harry Potter Island over at Islands of Adventure. And they put Hogsmeade in with the three broomsticks and they did all of that. Now, they upped their game when they did that. And in fact, they upped their game to not only compete, but in some arguments beat Disney with theming within a theme park. If you have not been to the Harry Potter world yet, uh, you're definitely missing out. It is super immersive when you go in there. Of course, they have Honeydukes. They've got Ollivander's The Wand Shop. They've got the Three Broomsticks. They've got the Butterbeer. They've got the Cool Rides. The shops, everything's all themed that way, of course. Then the cast members are dressed up like witches uh, from Harry Potter. And they just did a really good job theming it. Now, when you go into the Three Broomsticks or you go into the Leaky Cauldron over at Diagon Alley, it is completely themed like Harry Potter. You're in an old uh, creaky type of place with a lot of wood showing everywhere. You've got weird things going on around you. You hear different things. For example, when you go to the bathroom in Harry Potter land, you hear moaning Myrtle in the bathrooms, which is a weird experience, but cool if you know what the movies and the books do with moaning Myrtle. Same thing with like we were saying with the three broomsticks. The food is good. We've already talked about that. The food quality is good. They've done good with theming it more in an English type fare. So you've got your meat pies, you've got the fish and chips, you've got the rotisserie chickens, things like that. So the food's really good, but the theming just kicks it up a notch. So you're having good food, but you feel like you're actually living in the Harry Potter land. So there's no question that they hit a home run when they did Harry Potter land. But when you compare that to the rest of their park, the rest of the park is missing that aspect. Okay, so they're missing that. There's no question when you're looking at Universal, they think first about rides. And that's if you like thrill rides. So for example, the Velocicoaster is probably one of the best rides out there when you're thinking of a thrill ride. Now you compare that to probably the top ride over at Disney, which is Rise of the Resistance. They are totally different rides. The Velocicoaster is high on thrill, high on speed, it's going to turn your stomach upside down. It's going to make you feel a lot of different things. Disney does it differently because they want to immerse you in the atmosphere. So when you ride Rise of the Resistance, you go through the ride, and I don't want to spoil it for those who haven't ridden it yet, but they take you through multiple places being part of the resistance where you're escaping and then you're on the ship. You've probably seen that through a lot of the photos and videos out there and then how you navigate your way through the ship. So it is completely immersive. It is very different. It's not so much a thrill ride as much as it is a dark ride. And it is just completely a different type of ride than what most other people have done. But you feel like you are there. That is the big difference between how Universal does their parks and Disney does theirs. Okay. So Universal is thinking thrill. How can I get the biggest drops, the biggest speed and all that? Because of that, Disney wins. And let me tell you why. When you go to Disney, there's no question that any restaurant you go to, any land you go to, their number one priority is that you are fully immersed in that environment. So when you are going to be our guest over at the Magic Kingdom, you are in Beast's Castle with the different rooms and you've got lightning, you've got the rose, you've got the beast walking around, you've got all those kind of elements going on and you've got some very elite food over there. When you go to uh, Cinderella's Royal Table, you've got a character dining going on. So you're experiencing the interaction with the characters as well as you are in the uh, Cinderella's Castle at, at Disney World, which is really cool. So Disney is always thinking first of atmosphere and how do I immerse you in it? And they think second and third about drink and food quality. The way that I like to think about it, and this is critical when you're thinking about success of industry, is... Thinking about it with The Power of Why, which is a book by Simon Sinek. And if you've not read it, and if you've not seen his YouTube, he does a TED Talk, which is phenomenal. It's 20 minutes long, and it really explains the power of why. 
but he talks about you want to start with why. Why do you do what you do? What is the reasoning behind your business decisions and how you build things? And the key difference between Disney and Universal is they have a different why. Now, Universal does want to immerse you in their environment and they're working on improving that, but their why is thrills. They want to provide thrills and excitement. Disney wants to provide you with an immersion and an escape from the reality. So when you go into the Disney parks, whether you're walking down Main Street and you feel that nostalgic feeling of Main Street, or you go to the Haunted Mansion, or you go to Pirates of the Caribbean, their whole goal is to immerse you into this world, into this environment, and to get you to feel what the characters in the movies feel. They want you to live it and to be a part of it. And that isn't just their rides. That also includes the foods that they serve and the restaurants. And because they do that, it's just better. So know that at the end of the day, if you want a comparison on who's got the better food, the better drinks, it's Disney. And it's because they want you to be a part of their world. They want you to immerse yourselves into it. That's why like at Magic Kingdom, they have so many different drinks over there. That's why they have so many different restaurants. And they want you to escape. They want you to get away from reality. A more fair comparison, if you wanted to compare Universal food to Disney food, would be to compare Universal Parks to Disney Springs or to Downtown Disney. That, you would have a more fair comparison. And in fact, Universal may win in that case, just due to the additional theming that they do and some of the quality that they do and the variety they do. When you compare Disney Springs or Downtown Disney to Universal, Universal would probably get the edge, but when you're comparing it to the parks, without a question, Disney gets the edge. Here's the exciting part. Going forward now, we know that Universal is learning this. When you go back in time, the most themed place they had was the Monsters Cafe, my favorite place to go. But now that you've moved forward in time, they've got Harry Potter land. They've got the Simpsons Springfield area that's really cool. They are now continuing to build more and they have a new park coming in Orlando that's going to have the Ministry of Magic for Harry Potter. It's going to have the How to Train Your Dragon area. And the one that a lot of people are probably looking forward to the most is they're going to have their new Nintendo Land, which will be opening actually out in Hollywood here pretty quick as well. And obviously they are trying to immerse you into that. So Universal is learning and they are figuring it out. So we look forward to getting some really cool things out of Universal. And then if you haven't read the recent news, they're also going to be doing one in Frisco, Texas. Now, we don't know what that really looks like yet. It's very early in that news that actually just broke about two weeks ago. So they're going to be continuing to build and trying to grow, but they now understand it after doing the Harry Potter land. And so I'm really looking forward to see what they can come up with. And if anyone from Universal Creative is listening to this episode, please bring back the classic monsters and do something immersive with classic monsters. Now you don't need to do a haunted house and scare people. They do have that over at Universal Studios Hollywood. And let me tell you, it can be very scary to go through that haunted house over there, but you can do an immersive environment without it being too scary. You can make it creepy, uh, but don't make people jump out or anything like that. Maybe the Wolfman's running across the roofs or maybe Dracula's opening up windows or things like that. But you could make it very immersive and bring back those classic monsters because that would be a really great time as well. So with that, we hope you have a magical week and we hope you have fun planning your next vacation. If you have any feedback for us or you want to tell us your favorite restaurant or favorite area, find us over at Facebook at A Dryer Dose of Disney and leave us comments there. We will continue to update our food episodes. And you never know, this episode eventually may get an update where Universal takes the edge as long as they keep updating their atmosphere and improving their food variety at the park. So we look forward to that and look forward to the future encounters that we have with Universal Studios and Disney alike, because we love eating. So we'll talk to you next time. Bye-bye.